Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and today we're going to talk about making a panoramic curved backdrop for your models. So uh, I ran into Josh. You guys all remember Josh. We used to make a lot of videos together. Uh, and Josh was asking, he has a customer who asked him about making, you know, curved backgrounds. Uh, so I thought, uh, you know, that's a great idea. Let's, let's make a skill builder out of that. I do want to say that there are other ways to make backdrops. Um, you know, sky domes are, are, are a thing where you have an image that's a 360, like a half sphere image that's wrapped around a dome. Uh, totally something to do. It's a different process and a different starting image than what we're going to talk about right now. So right now, I want to talk about how to take just a regular panoramic, something you do with your, your phone or a camera, just, you know, a long image, how to take that and wrap it around to uh, put it behind your, your model. So let's go ahead. All right, so right here I have just a, it's just this cabin model I downloaded. You can see it's people sized. Here's Niraj and he could obviously fit into this. So it is full size. It's not like a smaller model or anything. It's the, the proper scale. Uh, so what I want to do is I'm going to import, start by importing a uh, full size panoramic image. Well, not full size. We'll, you'll see what I'm saying. So I'm going to go ahead and say import. And I have a panorama I downloaded. I'm going to grab it and I'm going to import it as an image. This is actually kind of important because I don't know the exact aspect ratio of this image. I just know it's a wide, long image. Uh, I do want to start by importing as an image. And I'll, I'll go ahead and grab it. Um, I'm just going to double click to place it. I'm going to rescale it in just a second here. I'm going to take it and rotate it. So let's get it upright. And let's drop it to the ground. So I'll drop it down to the bottom here. All right, and I'm just gonna scoot it somewhere back here. All right, now, obviously it's small, right? Because if, if I look at my building, I can't see any of the backdrop right now. So we need to make it bigger. Um, I'm going to go ahead and right click and explode the image. And then while everything's still selected, I'm gonna right click and say, make group. So a group is different than an image. Uh, an image you can't go into and edit the same way. So what I'm going to do is come into the image, I'm going to grab my tape measure, and I'm going to tell it that I want the bottom of this image here to here to be 300 feet. Do I want to scale up the active group? Yes. All right, that gets us this. All right, that looks, looks good. So if I come over, drop it like this. All right, see, that's, that seems believable. This, this, this is about real size against that. So that's 300 feet. That's important. Um, I can leave it in the group like this. I, there's no reason to break it out, but I, I could if I wanted to. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to create an arc. So I'm going to just grab my arc. I'm going to click here to about here. I'm saying about a lot because this is not, uh, there's probably exact science and ways to do this, but I'm just going to come up with quick and dirty. That's, it's the easiest way to do it. So I'm going to, I'm going to make more sides. I'm going to say 24 sides. Maybe a little bit a little more, more, uh, little finer arc there and pull it out till I snap to a half circle and click. Now I'm going to select this arc and I go to entity info and I can see that at that arc, the length is 330 feet. Now I can highlight this, but I can't actually overwrite. I can't type it. What I can do is I can grab it. I can hit scale and I can scale it. I can just kind of nudge it here. What I want to do is I want to get it just under 300 feet. Oh, there we go. That was nice shooting text. 298. So that is the length of the arc. That's not the radius. The radius is the center to one of the edges. This is the overall length. That's all these lines. So this curved line now is just slightly smaller than this whole picture. This is very important. We'll see why in just one second. What I'm gonna do now is just draw a line across the two ends. And I'm gonna push pull that up to the top of the image. And I get rid of this. So there I've just created basically my geometry for this backdrop. Now, of course, I want to make sure if the right direction is facing me, if I end up pulling this into a render or something like that, I don't. I want this to be able to render. So I'm going to hit reverse faces. White's facing towards me. And now this image, what I can do is I can say B to bring my paint bucket, select it, and then drop it on the arc. Now, not awesome, right? If I was, if I was aiming straight on like this, here, let's do this too. Let's go, uh, go into... Uh, our materials. Let's go look at like landscape materials and maybe we'll grab some grass and throw it on the ground here. Something like that. Natural astroturf look in nature that is so real. 
So, okay, so if I was to look at it straight on like this, if I was to render something like this, or maybe I'll move my building back into here a little bit more. All right, so, you know, I could, I could see how this would work, um, but as soon as I start to get around like this, all of a sudden, you know, I got some twilight zone or something going on over here, not gonna work. So this is something we've talked about quite a bit before, and that is the idea of applying two curved surfaces by dropping onto the segment. So if I go to view, show hidden geometry, I get the breaks here, and now I can say, okay, take this and apply it to this one section. Oop, hold on, let's close this. So the reason it's stretching like this is because this material, I'm gonna go ahead and explode it out, but I could double click to go in here. If I right click on here, it does tell me it's projected. So I'm gonna turn projected off. So if I check it again, projected's turned off. Now, if I come in and I select this, get out of my way, and I apply it right here, something very different applies, see that? So it's not stretched anymore. It's also not lined up. So a couple things I'm gonna do right here. I'm gonna right click on this one face, go to texture, position, and it's gonna show me the whole picture. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this, I'm gonna slide it over, and again, not, I'm not 100%, I'm not perfectly nailing this, this is, this is close as what I'm shooting for, and drag it so the end of that picture is right on the end of my, my arc. Now, simple, now I just go to my paint bucket, I hold down my modifier key to bring up the eyedropper, select, drop, select, drop. And I'm just gonna work my way around here and watch what happens as I do this. The arc gets filled in, unbroken, with that image. And you see, not, not a big adjustment here at these ends, but as I start to get around to the far sides, I'm gonna see a little bit more. Oh yeah, there we go. See, lines up, lines up a little better there. And because the the length of this arc is the same length as that pic initial picture, I should get here and just get to the end. You can see right here. See that? Oh, there's a little white spot right there, right there, right at the end. Wraps all the way around. Now I can go here, turn off hidden geometry, and now I can explore my model inside that half circle without any geometry getting cut off. Um, and that wraps around very nicely. And I have a lot of options as far as, you know, rendering this model or not rendering even, just viewing this model against this wraparound backdrop. So hopefully you like that video. If you've ever struggled with putting imagery behind it, mean, so we, we do have other things, right? Put watermarks and uh, a couple different ways to do it. The advantage of doing it this way is then I actually have that full 180, it's not 360, 180 degrees that I can I can rotate against. If we wanted to go bigger than that, then we're starting to talk about like a little bit of photo editing where if we wanted a full wraparound image, we'd have to have the ends that, so that they're made to connect together. And uh, then we'd talk about like a 360 degree photo and with domes, then we're talking about, yeah. So there's more to it, we, this can go further, but this is very quick, very simple, very easy to do with just a regular panorama. If you like that video, go ahead and click like down below. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. We create several videos each and every week, and you'll be notified of all of them if you subscribe. Most importantly, though, please leave us a comment down below. Have you ever tried this? Have you stumbled? Uh, let me know how it's worked out for you. We like making these videos a lot. We like them even more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.